So this is uh, 974, right? Exercise. That's what I'm sure. Right? So you have the diffusion equation, but now you are actually using the temperature, so you can write it like that, using the temperature. Okay. T plus A T. A square. Okay. So the equation is the same, but not the not the geometry. The geometry is different. So from zero to L, this is along x. And then uh, the boundary condition is that uh, the temperature is. At t equal, uh, x equal to zero is one, and uh, zero at uh, x equals to l. So t is this is t equals to one. Here yeah, t equals zero. Okay, then you. Well, obviously, you want to calculate uh, T as a uh, temperature as a function of time. Okay. Well, to do that, uh, first of all, this is a diffusion equation to the physics is quite, uh, I mean, this, this also needs an initial condition. Uh, uh, initially, T is zero. All time so t equals zero. Another is initial condition. So with the initial condition and boundary condition, you want to solve for the temperature as as a function of x and time. So, okay, what you want to find? All right. And before we do that, obviously we uh, this is a diffusion equation with uh, with boundary conditions. So uh, you know that uh, uh, when you, you go impose a initial a boundary condition for a long time, that uh, the temperature should is actually temperature. Temperature actually goes to a steady state. So, so the temperature becomes independent of, zero, of time. So the second derivative will be zero. So if the temperature is second, if it's second spatial derivative is zero, so the temperature must be a linear function at time goes to infinity. So you can, without doing any calculation, you can basically sketch the Time dependency of, of the temperature capital T. Initially, it will be just this, this is x, this is this is temperature. So initially, t equals zero will be like that. But at the boundary, it's kept at uh, fixed one. So initially, it's like a sharp drop and then zero. And then this is kept fixed at t at zero. Then uh, at t goes to infinity, time goes to infinity. You know that it must be a linear function, so it must be this must be t x infinity will be this function. This will be obviously is uh, at, at x goes to zero is one at x equals zero. L is zero, so it's one minus x over L. But it's a linear function, which will be one at x equals zero, at, and zero at x equals to L. Okay, so that is, uh, we know that the 
asymptotic value of temperature would be like that. So as times start from, this is t equals zero at time equals zero. So at time, uh, move from uh, initial time to the this asymptotic will move to uh, the linear function. So that's what we try to try to get. Okay. So uh, then once we know that we can uh, use the separable separable solution. Uh, in this case, uh, we already did that. Uh, I mean, uh, well, the text already did that in the beginning of 9.7. So it's It's in the form of nine point nine nine, nine point nine nine, and in, in the same a because uh this form of the diffusion equation exactly the the form in nine point ninety eight. So this is the same. So it's still using a as kind of the diffusion coefficient. Okay, so the solution will be given by nine point. Nine, nine, nine. Okay. So, except that uh, nine point nine nine has both the cosine term and the sine term, but now the boundary condition at uh, at zero and L can allow us to use just the sine term because of that you know, we have done that quite a few times. So we can just use nine point ninety nine. As a separate form, and and remember, we talked about many times. Nine point nine nine is just one term in the series. It's just one separable solution, and you need to add enough separable uh, solution to to uh, form the solution. And what you need to do is in what in enough is uh, often you use a set that is known to be a complete set, like a free series and that kind of thing. That uh, so that would be a complete. Uh, solution. In this this case, uh, we write uh, t. It's t. Uh, we know that uh, at all these solution in uh, nine nine point nine nine will goes to zero because of the exponential term e to the minus omega square a square t. That uh, all all these term will goes to zero. So. A t goes to infinity, you don't have those terms. All the summation of these separable solutions will go to a large time. So you must add the asymptotic, asymptotic solution separately to all these separable solutions. So that this is a, you know, asymptotic solution. And then you press a bunch of you know, Uh, separable solution. In this case, uh, you have sine term and cosine term. So we we'll already said that we all want to uh, just keep the sine term. And that's just um, an index. Uh, so like, um, and then just use the sine term. Like uh, you have in in that solution, the form is omega, and now it's yeah, subscript n times x and the e to the Minus uh, minus no i minus omega squared because omega a squared a squared plus t right and and then sum over n then we will define what n uh, the limit when we consider the boundary condition right the boundary condition is that uh, the temperature is zero at x equals to l and one at x equals to zero. So when the boundary condition at zero, that's obviously 
this is uh, this is as e plus the one is the bounded division, but then uh, from this series, the subject zero here is one. The subject zero here, everything is zero. So, so that is uh, automatically satisfied. If you keep only the sign term, that's why we, we keep only sign instead of sign and cosine. You have 9.99, you have the cosine term and the side term, but you keep just the, the sign term, term is what the cosine term. If you keep the cosine term, then it won't satisfy this boundary condition. Okay, so that affects the sign term. Now the second boundary condition is uh, x is equals to one, that equals to zero at, we substitute, uh, it should be equal to zero by the, by the boundary condition now from the series, uh, not, not one L, capital L. So x equal L, these two cancel, so that's, that's this two becomes zero, and that's sum of n is n, so a radius of n times l. Okay, the rest is the same. Okay, and that required this, this to be zero, so that fixed this uh, omega of n because you want sign omega sub n times l equals to zero for all n. Then uh, obviously we want to learn about that omega the sign omega sub n times l equals to zero for all n. So obviously omega n is just simply uh, omega n times l is n pi. So omega n should be n pi over l. And n will be integer one, two, three, not including zero because zero will make the whole thing zero. So that that you know, means that we don't have that term anyway. And it doesn't include uh, negative integer because uh, negative integer those are dependent. They are not independent uh, function. Okay, so so this means now we can fix. Uh, once we we fix that, we can rewrite the uh, solution. So now n is fixed from one to infinity. So a sub n sine so omega sub n become n pi over l. We so can fix that, and then we'll just fix the omega sub n in the exponential function becomes minus n square pi square is l square then we got the a square times t okay so that is the form of the temperature okay now the final step is to, to find all the a sub n okay now to, to do that is like uh, finding a um, a uh, the coefficient of a Fourier series, and that means uh, we like we can put this uh, one minus x over l to the other side and multiply by the same basis function and do the integral. For over the domain, which is zero to L, and then the, going through the, the integration, usually you will keep, keep all, only the, the the same term. So let, let's just go through the process and so move that to the other side, so, which is uh, x over L minus one, and then we we'll multiply by the same. Basis which is not normalized. We haven't normalized it. We don't have to normalize it. If we just go every, I mean, follow everything correctly, we don't actually need to normalize it. And then the, that we integrate that from C to Okay, move this to. The left hand side and the integrate and the multiply by the same basis and integrate over 
the domain that equals to the rest. Now we already use n. So we use the summation index so n plus n infinity. We set m. What what this condition is at zero? So uh, this is this is at zero. At t goes zero, t with t is zero. So we, we so that the right the left hand side is zero, we move that to the other side. So this one I multiply by this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, 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 n by x over okay. n. So n over L. And then the exponential function becomes zero. Integrate. Dx from C. Okay. Uh, that uh, usually, uh, I mean, you can go through the trigonometric relationship and use the, the formula sine A times sine B and go through the process. And but uh, we can, we have done this before. So finally, you will see that. Uh, it, uh, it only is non-zero with n equals to n. Or this integration will give you a conjugate delta. And then the conjugate delta will multiply by uh, when m equals n, this becomes a sine squared term. So then you integrate from zero to l, will give you l over two. So that equals sine um, two, um, so the delta function, not conical delta. No, it goes to, uh, no, it goes to L over two is after you sum over, sum over N. So now the, the rest is just this integral, that, uh, which is elementary. <laughs> you can do it uh, look up the table or uh, do it uh, by integration by part, which we did that before, and then figure out what that is, and that will fit just easily. Right? I think that part, <laughs> leave it to you, right? <laughs>